So Manchester United are officially out of the top four race. Yeah, so this is the story of every Manchester United fan. Um, another disappointing game. Um, yeah. Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Football with Priscilla. I am Priscilla, obviously, so hi guys, welcome back. Um, I have a very interesting video for you guys today, but before we get into the video for today, make sure you share, like, and subscribe, and turn your notifications on to know when next I post a video. With that said, let's get into the video for today. I know people are wondering, but Priscilla, why are you smiling? Why are you energetic? Your team lost. It's because we expected it. Um, uh, in my previous video, I said Arsenal were going to win. And my friend today was texting me and she was like, um, there's a Manchester United game today and you're not saying anything, you're quiet. I'm like, because as a Manchester United fan, we've reached a point where we've accepted who we are, that we can be useless and we are useless right now. So I told my friend, I knew Arsenal was going to win. So there was no need for me to like rant or panic or feel bad. I was just sitting there and just watching the game like, cool. I just followed that game just to see the scoreline, to be honest. I knew Arsenal were going to win. I just didn't know by what number of goals they were going to win. But yeah, so let's get into the game today. Um, I would like to talk about Arsenal first. First of all, I'm going to give Arsenal um, props for how they played. It does not take rocket science for a person to know that Arsenal are going to take advantage of the pace of Saka, uh, Smithrow, and is it Keita? So it did not take rocket science to know that. Um, at Manchester United, Manchester United's back line cons consisted of Teles, um, what's this guy's name? Veran, Lindelof, and Dalot. Okay. I've always assumed that Dalot is fast and Teles is also fast, but Teles really struggled today to cope up with the pace of Saka. Now, the first goal, I have no idea how you leave Saka open. Saka is a fast player. How, how Teles managed to leave him open without being defended is beyond me. And when you're a defender, don't clear a ball that you're not sure of, okay? The guy was kicking anyhow without even being sure that he was going to get the ball. If I were a tellers in that moment, head the ball out or something. Don't try and do a fancy kick when you're not sure. Because once you miss, you play the... Once you miss and it goes to the opposition's player, there's a chance that they might score, of which Arsenal did score from that mistake. So it was quite something. Um... Arsenal's front three really came at Manchester United's back line, and we all knew they were going to do that. They really, um, they really uh, utilized their pace. Now, um, Arsenal's midfield was also good. I want to talk about Zaka. Is it Shaka? Zaka. I don't know if you pronounce that Zaka or Saka. No, it's Granite Shaka. Zaka. Okay, Zaka. We'll go with Zaka. Pardon my pronunciation if it's wrong. But anyway, I remember there's a time Arsenal had a problem with Xhaka. And I remember I had a conversation with my brother. And I said, listen, Xhaka might be a player who, um, who's um, sometimes, he, like, sometimes he's just uncontrollable. And he commits ridiculous fouls and reckless challenges. But Xhaka is a machine on the midfield. He's, you know, he's a box-to-box -box midfielder. And he knows how to hold the midfield. So, I always say this. Arsenal fans were so quick to say, Xhaka out, Xhaka out. For me, I always thought Xhaka was a very good midfielder. He's strong on the ball. He knows how to hold the ball. He knows how to break play. I personally think Xhaka is a very good... I thought... I've been thinking he's a very good midfielder. Um, The goal, that was a beauty. It reminded me of Scores. Scores never used to score so many goals, but when he did, there would be um, screamers. You know, it would be a beauty. Like, it would be those goals that don't come every time. Like, there are those goals that come once in a while. So, that goal was good. Um, another player that impressed me in Arsenal was Elneny. Now, Elneny is what a CDM should be. 
if you watch the Arsenal game, you should have noticed where El Neni was playing, okay? So El Neni was playing in and around the center, okay? He wasn't pushing too forward. He was making sure he covers the back line, which is what Manchester United don't have. When we cry for a CDM, we need a person who is protecting the back line. I remember my brother taught me this. In a back line of four, okay? If one of the if one of the defenders uh, gets pulled out of the line, the the central defensive midfielder needs to cover up that position that has that position that is vacant. Now, if you don't have a CDM holding that line in order to cover it up when one of the defenders has been pulled off of the line, it's very easy for the striking force that's coming against your defenders to find space. So that's the importance of a CDM, and that's what most people don't understand. Now, El Nini was a very um, precise um, explanation, so to say, as to why we need a midfielder. He was roaming in and around the, 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 the center. I loved how he kept on <clears throat> holding the ball, distributing the ball, and not going forward. When he gets the ball, he passes the ball and comes back to the center, holding that like midfield line. Elneny and Jaka complement each other. Elneny isn't fast, um, and he's not so physical. Jaka, on the other hand, is fast and physical, but he doesn't have the ball control or the ball possession that Elneny has. Um, Arsenal's defense also really played well. I really thought their defense would be bullied by Ronaldo. They were not. Even though Arsenal were not playing to their best, but what how they play, how Arsenal has been playing has been very interesting. Another standout player for me in that Arsenal team is um, Odegaard. Now, one of my favorite positions, aside from a midfielder, is a number 10. The number 10 role, that free role. Odegaard plays that free role. The passes that Odegaard was making today were like they were just beautiful. Like you know, players like Odegaard, you don't give them chance. Okay, they're like the Iniestas and the Javis. And once you give them, once you give Odegaard room to think about where he wants to pass the ball, it's going to he he's it's very dangerous. Um, the pass that he gave to Saka for that penalty was beautiful. Like how he how the vision. The vision was beautiful. I, I love players that have technical ability. And one of Arsenal's weaknesses today was, what's his name, Tavares? Tavares? I honestly thought that guy would come out with the red card. The way he was playing, he was a danger to that Arsenal team. But overall, Arsenal played well. Shout out to Ramsdale. I honestly thought when Arsenal bought Ramsdale, he was pathetic. But actually, Ramsdale is very good. Now, let's go to my darling team. Manchester United. Where do I even start, Lord? Um, we'll start with the defense. I was very disappointed in Lindorf and Veran. Okay, in their defense, they were coming up against speed. For me, I blame the midfield. Before the Jaka go, I kept on shouting. I was telling my brother. My brother is an Arsenal fan, by the way. So I was busy shouting. The midfield is open. Why is the midfield open? Two minutes later, Jaka scores. You could see that the midfield was open. And now, this is the difference between Jaka and Elneny and Scott McTominay and Matic. Matic is a very good player. He's a very good CDM, but he's past his prime. He's slow. McTominay is all about reckless challenges, positional sense, McTominay. Like, there's no midfielder who's... I think our midfielders just... They don't know how to read danger. I don't know if they don't want to read danger or they don't know how to read danger. I don't know. But there is that with McTominay. And you could see, clearly see the difference between McTominay and um, Matic and Xhaka and Elneny. Xhaka and Elneny held the midfield. McDominy and Matic were being played through by the Arsenal uh, players. So, what else? Um, Bruno missed the penalty. That was sad. Uh, Manchester United, for me, I don't think we... Every time you'd want to review Manchester United as a team, it's just the same thing. They don't play like a team. 
they they are so individualistic i don't know if it's because they don't have a system they don't have a style of play even under rugby we still can't clearly see the style of play arsenal has a system you could see it um i'll give an example of man city throw any useless player in man city he can work i'll give an example of gabriel jesus gabriel jesus is not a good striker like if you put gabriel jesus in everton I can assure you he can only score like 10 goals in one season. But because of the system that Man City has created, Gabriel Jesus is scoring four goals in one game. That's what a good system, a good style of play does. It can make even those players that are not good look good. However, Manchester United has no style of play. We have no system. And because of that, we tend to expose so many players. They are weaknesses. Dalot is good going forward, but he's very poor at defending. That has been the problem. Uh, Aaron Van Bissaka, on the other hand, is very good defending, but is poor going forward. Tellez, um, he's not good defensively. He's very poor defensively. Defensively, and he was very poor today. Um, who else played? Lindov and Veran, like I said earlier, they were up against pace of Sh of, Za of Sha Sa Saka, what's his name? Saka, uh, Smithrow, and uh, Odegaard. Okay, there was that. We got to the midfield. <clears throat> I already talked about with Tomini and Matic. Striking force. We have Ronaldo. We have, what's his name, this guy? Sancho. And we have Elang Elanga. Now, Ronaldo is a good player. Ronaldo was good today, although I feel like after the 60th minute, after the Bruno, after Bruno failed his penalty, Ronaldo kind of went quiet. Sancho is good. I honestly think we need a style of play, a system. I think these players are failing to play because there is no system. Elanga is an overhyped youngster. When Elanga was coming up, everyone was like, oh my God, Elanga. I didn't see it. For me personally, speed does. I don't rate players that rely on speed i prefer players that rely on technical ability yeah rashford and jesse lingard i'm a jay Lins fan i love jesse lingard but him and rashford when they were substituted in did absolutely nothing i don't even know why we brought them on and the sad part is we had our substitute we've reached a point where we have to bring one matter to be a player to change the game for us. How? I have no idea. That's how bad we, we've become. Juan Mata. Juan, Juan Mata. I want to pronounce it properly, but Juan Mata. Juan. Anyway, you get the point. Mata. Mata is so, and he's old. Like, it's just sad. For me personally, like I've said, if Ten Hag wants to succeed at Manchester United, do what Ateta did. Sell or integrate the kids, like the academy players, the youngsters. Integrate them. Let them learn your system. These big, big people, sell them. Or put them on the bench. Let them just be coming in to help the kids. But integrate the kids. These big people, I know these big players... They're not doing what they're supposed to do. They're not running. They've won everything. They have no point to prove. But if you bring in academy players, they have a point to prove. They want to put their names on the map. So I feel for me, let's bring in the academy players. I feel, I feel it's high time we bring in the academy players. So congratulations, Arsenal. I knew you were going to win. Um, thank you for proving me right. My prediction came true. Thank you so much. I honestly think uh, Arsenal is going to make it into top four. Like, I had hoped Manchester United would make it, but no, I feel like Arsenal is going to make it. Tottenham are, are kind of inconsistent. Arsenal right now has the momentum, they have the zeal, they believe they can do anything at this moment in time. So, yeah, for the top fours, I'm calling it Arsenal will get into the Champions League. Arsenal will, will get top four. I hope not. I would rather Tottenham get top four than Arsenal. But it's really leaning towards Arsenal. They have the momentum, the zeal, the passion. The kids are ready to die for that fourth position. While Manchester United is just sitting back. And the funny thing is, Manchester United has West Ham to look back to. Because West Ham is coming back again. So it's, it's crazy. So yeah. 
that's all I had for you guys today. Um, we go, we keep following the top four race. It's going to be interesting until the end, like I said. Um, but for now, this is where we are at. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure you share, like, and subscribe. Bye.